What's the worst DM you've ever had? What did he do? Play a game of Pathfinder with a friend from college. Figure I'll make a bog standard paladin. Show up to the first session. Find out we're doing an investigation of some kind. Figure it'll be great, as I'm high enough level to have Detect Evil and Zone of Truth. Oh, that should make it a lot, a lot easier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Suddenly everybody is immune to both of those things. Bullshit. Go to your village. Turns out there's a tiefling I later find out is a DM player character. And is a reoccurring character who beat us there. And he's already working on the investigation for the magistrate. Okay, just stay out of trouble. I'm watching you, scum. <laughs> but JPEG. I, I fucking love Oblivion. He laughs me off, saying that my quest for good is impotent and that good and evil are antiquated terms. Say that again and I'll introduce you to some equally antiquated sword techniques. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Seriously, you know, see when it comes to teeth guns, why do they have such a bad stigma about them? It just seems to attract the worst sort of people. Like, yeah. uh, and the worst thing is teeth guns are actually kind of cool. Yeah. Like, they are kind of cool, but like, DM player character, teeth gun, you know it's not good. <laughs> you, know, you know what we're in for. We come back from some shenanigans to find that the town is burning down and that same DM player character is on top of the town hall playing a fiddle or something. Ooh, ooh. Fiddler on the roof. Oh, ooh, God. All right, ne- all right, Nero, ne- ne- <laughs> calm down there, could you? <laughs> Jesus. And smugly implies that it was he who burned the town down. Time to leave them all behind. Activate smite and swig my last health potion. Get to the roof. He jumps off and disappears. Jump off after him. Take about 20 damage and recover with Hero's Defiance. DM says the tiefling has gone invisible. Detect evil. DM responds by describing one of the DM player character's cohorts. A gaunt little girl in a black dress with an oversized scythe. He comes out of nowhere and crits me. Oh, come what? On. It just so happens that her scythe steals my spells. So no more Hero's Defiance. I get knocked out. Wake up. Vow to get that fucker. We move on to some wizard tower or some sh**. Fight some big bad monster. No clue what's going on. Tiefling shows up in the final boss chamber, dual wielding some magical scimitars. The monster we spent about 20 rounds fighting all over this tower is felled instantly. As the tiefling's swords glow with, you know, the darkest light. Oh no. Okay. (laughs) After we clean up a bit, he poofs in on top of a statue. I question him a bit, since apparently he can't or won't be killed, and he just remains mysterious. Ask some fairly pointed questions about who he is and what he's doing. DM spins some cringeworthy prose about being a wanderer between dark and light. Fine. Zone of truth. Poof, he's gone. Later, another player who got into a spat with a tiefling who turned into a blue dragon and turned everybody's blood to sand for a one round total party kill. Apparently, we were warned. (laughs) <laughs> you know, there really is something to this. It's always like, it's a, it feels like there's a lot of reoccurring like themes that we come across. Like, you know, cringy DMs, like, you know, like the whole spiel about, oh, dark and light and all these planets. Yeah. Villain. You know, there's a lot of... Ugh, but as uh, long as D&D exists, there's always going to be cringy DMs and cringy players. I know there will be, there will be. And I suppose it's always fun to laugh at them. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not so bad when it's a player, though, because then the rest of the party and the DM can, like, curtail it. Yeah. But yeah. whenever it's a bad DM, it's very difficult to be like, look, me, you're doing Ooh. a good job. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's not nice to try and say that I as know. well. It's very hard to actually say to a DM, look, me, you're sh- What did he do? Nothing. Literally. Join an already running campaign. Oh, we don't use a combat grid. I prefer to do it in the theatre of the mind. <laughs> oh, I don't mind theatre of the mind for the most part, but I do prefer having some representation. Yeah. Just so I know, oh, right, how far am I away? Can I reach him? Can I hit him? Can I go on? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it does make life easier. Do session. He retcons the session for some fucking reason. Rona hits two weeks later. Organise us to run on Rule 20. Does it for one week, then stops. Only just now he's reorganised to meet up again with restrictions lifting. Oh, I couldn't find a place to be able to session, so I'll have to cancel this week. A player already offered to host in their garden. He retcons the session again. Like, mate, I just want to play some D&D. <laughs> <laughs> like, mate, yeah, come mate, on! come on here. Like, be honest with you, only, like, be honest with you, retconning is generally not a good thing to do. You yeah. really want to be avoiding it, for the most part. He had sex with my underage brother. That was pretty bad. 
but like as a DM, he never planned more than one decision ahead, so all our quests always felt super poorly ad-libbed, and at times almost nonsensical with their weak resolutions and pointless twists. Why do they never talk about the <gasps> that really stands out, like the sex with uh, Umbridge brother? How did it? <laughs> like, how do you just skip over that? Like, like, I don't get that. Like, you know, you can't just just throw <gasps> it in there and not talk about I it. Know. Like, seriously, <laughs> come on, guys, come on. <laughs> New to D&D. Try fourth edition starter box with some friends, but was a failure. Try again with D&D 3.5 at the suggestion of a friend. Get other friends into it. Friend Jody, obviously censored name. Wants to be our DM. I mean, sure, how bad could it be? Oh boy, this set up both the greatest and worst campaign ever. Run Sunless Citadel with homebrew stuff mixed in that Jody got from university friends. Crit table, assassin plotline from her campaign that was somehow in our game. Jody is prone to power tripping hard and is a massive control freak. She thinks D&D is the DM versus the players, so she throws a lot of curveballs at us to try and wipe us. There's honestly nothing worse than I the think, DM versus players. I, th- I think that... Let's play you know, the worst tweet. Yeah, where they're playing it all wrong. Yeah. Where you should be the story, <laughs> it's the a, story it's creator, a, yeah. not... Yeah, give the, the players challenges, but it's not a, a v, like a fever V. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know? come on, here, you can't. fall, and then they all die. There we go, let's go home. I know. Bite, you know what I mean? Party is incredibly f***ing <gasps> crafty and great at solving problems, and we best her every chance we get. Campion starts grinding to a halt and we basically get caught up in a lot of side objects or side quests. DM getting mad we haven't died yet. We start getting encounters like dragons in a closet, to which he retcons almost immediately because party called her out for it being dumb. Can't remember this encounter exactly. You know that assassin plotline I mentioned before? Somehow they were hunting us for some bullshit reason. Basically tried to kill us, but due to quick thinking by the party, we bested them and the assassin fled. My wizard dies, so I basically remake him with the same sheet, but slightly different name to save time. Dies again due to goblin ambush in a swamp. Party's fault for this one. Campion basically grinds to a halt. Fifth edition comes out. We start our own campaign without Judy, and things have been pleasant since. We still talk about that 3.5 campaign the characters, and the moments we had that were pretty damn memorable. Just a shame our DM was <gasps> I ended up making a spiritual successor to my wizard that I still use in a few campaigns. I don't know where this whole thing came from, the DM versus the player mindset. I know. Like, I know it's a game and, like, you... But, like, it, 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 you don't... It feels like it only came about in the last, like, in, in really 5th edition. Yeah. Or maybe it was, like, a meme that yeah. came about. Like, you know, like, DMs acting saying like, that it oh, should be It you. should be DM versus players to a certain extent, but not make that your whole objective. Because, yeah. the, yes, the DM has to send out things that could result in a TPK, but but not every encounter. Yeah, you're right. I would say so. That's pretty bad. What do you guys think in the comments? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by Neckbeardia's 3D printed models. Go ahead and check out the eBay store down below. We have tons and tons of really cool looking models. We've got it all from orcs, dwarves, the lizards and fish people. And yes, most of the sets you can get some big bitty bitches in with them. <laughs> and honestly, they're our biggest sellers. Yeah, by far. Yeah. All the models are printed and processed by us, and it is by far the best way to help us out to do what we do. So go ahead and check them out below, and just just look at this lizard lady with titties. <laughs> she got big titties. Look at the titties! <laughs> just came in firstly to say hello to Nick Beardia and his sister wife. I don't know where this first came from. I don't know came, where, where this came, came from. from. Where you were... Oh, fuck it. Let's just go with it. <laughs> okay, brother. <laughs> <laughs> on topic. One of the worst DMs I had was in a game on Roleplay Online. So you know how fucked it is. I was in a game there for Changeling the Lost, a line I really enjoyed. The GM apparently had a specific plot they wanted to play through. It seemed cool, and I got a friend of mine involved too. In play, the GM would PM me and say... Hey, here's something I'd like for you to do for X player. To form bonds and help the plot. I thought at the time that that was pretty cool. Usually it was explaining my character had gained some item or treasure and that they thought it would be nice for player X to have it and to roleplay the C9. I expected other players were getting similar PMs. I don't know if they ever did though. 
So I played along until in character and out of character. One player and character reacted quite badly to one of these pre-planned scenes. In context, the GM asked my character to give a beautiful dress to one of the female characters, who essentially was female to male. What? Alright, whatever you're into, you sure, why not? I was lax to do this, even stating this to the GM. Though they stated it was okay and to go ahead, and it seemed this was all planned. I did so, and it all kicked off in my PMs. Now said player was an abrasive member of the party, and not great to get along with at the best of times. So in my stupidity, instead of stating to them in defence that the GM asked me to do these actions, I kicked off on how abrasive they were, not just to me, but to the party as a whole. In the end we talked it out, though decided we would not interact with each other in the sandbox anymore, instead doing stuff for the good of the party. Next day I woke to find the GM kicked me from the game for schizoid behaviour, for the things they themselves told me to do. You see, in Roleplay Online, if you didn't know, the GM can see all PMs from the players in their game board. Despite coming to a shaky truce with said player, this happened. Fucking Roleplay Online and its trolling membership. That sounds really bizarre that the DM can lead. That sounds, yeah. Mm, I don't know. I, I, I've never used this website. I've never heard of it. I know. Look, I, go, I garn all the time about Goal 20. So, like, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe my garden about Goal 20 is all justified. Yeah, that guy just sounds like a bit of a fucking mental. Let's be serious. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what to make of that story. It was a bit of a mess all over the show. Yeah. It just seemed, yeah, the guy was just fucking mental. Yeah. So this all took place in a Red Dead Redemption themed roleplay. Had a good thing going after a heist and a battle with the authorities. Whole gang is on the run. My PC, a typical gunslinger with a bit of an elegant European flair, goes out into the woods to grab some water from a ravine. Spots a little girl. DM player character. Fuck. <laughs> is that how bad it's called? It's like, yeah. DM player character. Shit! Shit! <laughs> Brings her back to camp. Little girl is actually a cannibal. What the fuck, dot PNG? Decides to roll with it. Brings her along. Feeds her only people we kill on raids or not at all. Little girl goes on a discovery journey one day. Comes back a werewolf. What? Dot JPEG. Gets adopted by a lesbian couple. One of them is another DM player character. Ugh, okay. Rest of the players get annoyed. Teenage girl player of the group decides to chime in. Makes a half angel, half demon paladin a gender per agent each and a, what a gender person a oh, fuck. All oh, right, like whatever you're into, you know. Gets what I mean. approved by DM. Werewolves and half angel people make guns and cowboy stuff effectively worthless. The other day. Yeah, let's be serious. DM starts allowing erotic role play. <laughs> Ray. 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 I, why, why I love so... how you went for Ray and I went for no. <laughs> I don't know, I, I quite enjoy doing the uh, big man Ray. 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 No. Some of the people taking place in it are underage. Oh, what? what? Oh, in the erotic when... roleplay? Oh, fuck. Sweet, whatever you're on to. You know, like... Me and two others leave. Got blocked by DM. Friend called a homophobe for not accepting her <laughs> DM player characters. Friend is actually a lesbian. <laughs> My face went. Oh, what do you do with it? Like, there's, there's going to be some people that are just sexual degenerates. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, why? Like, wh- why do you have to just shove this stuff in front of everyone's faces beyond me? Yeah. I don't know. Like, whatever you want to, please, please don't shove it down my throat, would you? Player clerk, ask random passenger the way to the temple. Who are you? What business do you have at the temple? And can you even prove that? Other players say out of character. All right, since this guy doesn't want to cooperate, I look for someone else to ask. GM, people don't want to talk to you. They get mad when you ask them. He still tries to ask someone for the way to the temple. At this point, a small mob has formed around you. GM just wanted us to go to the tavern, so eventually we did. One PC pulls out an orc tooth to brag. People in the tavern get scared, as the city is technically occupied by orcs. Barkeeper tells us to leave his tavern. I stand up to talk to him. I ask if I can roll a persuasion check so we can stay. GM. No. A bunch of really tough bouncers show up to throw you out. Party slowly and reluctantly walks out of the bar while antagonising the bouncers. GM. The bouncers now also got knives. Um, okay, I guess. Outside the bar, we are pissed, so we try and steal the bar sign. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty standard Standard. stuff then, yeah. One of the bouncers shoes us away. I tried to talk to him that my friends don't know what they're doing and just let us off the hook. 
He spits at me, the cleric, in the face, but doesn't engage in any combat before going back into the bar. It's amazing. The GM railroaded us where he didn't want us to be, then constantly threatened escalation of the situation that never escalated anywhere. Why? Why are you like this? Why? Why? <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention what happened the next day. I go to the temple. Yes, I eventually got the directions. To complain how badly the clerics is treated in the city, as I was literally spat at by a bar employee. Priest at the temple says he can't do anything about it. I ask him who can. Well, probably the bishop in the capital. I ask to set up a letter to the bishop. Priest reluctantly agrees. Come back a few days later. After a bunch of pointless plot hooks in the town that refused to go absolutely anywhere, ask if the letter got any reply yet. Uh, no, we don't even know if the letter arrived. What do you mean? Yeah, well, the orcs sometimes intercept our mail, so this letter maybe didn't go anywhere. Why wouldn't you tell me this when I wrote the letter? Like I said, we don't know if the orcs intercepted this letter. Well, let me write another letter. Um, okay. Nothing ever came of the letter. It's not like I wanted to warp the plot of the module the GM tried to walk down step by step. I just wanted something to validate my choice to actually roleplay in a roleplaying game. Have some character interaction. Make me feel like my character was part of a cohesive world. But the GM apparently thought roleplaying was just a distraction that boils down to having NPCs be annoying and make funny nasal sounds until your PCs go back to chasing the plot. A plot that was utter dog shit, mind you. I wrote about it a few times on here already. It included us staying in that town for two in-game weeks, three and a half sessions of playtime, where my PC did nothing but going through libraries to find a map, while other PCs bummed around in the city because they couldn't help me look through the libraries. 